Uh, managing Director at Land Colt Trading joins us from San Antonio. And Todd, um, what do you make of these last couple of days? You, do you think this is the beginning of this correction that we've been waiting for? Or is this more a case of, um, you know, not, not that serious? No, it's definitely the beginning of a correction. As a matter of fact, I anticipate the slide will continue. You know, here we are in the middle of fourth quarter earnings season, and there has been a direct uh, look at, at the top line revenue numbers, which actually have been coming in uh, actually lower than, than anticipated. Whereas in the third quarter, we had actual uh, earnings per share numbers that were actually beating Wall Street consensus. But this quarter, the, it's just not looking too good. People are not spending money. Unemployment continues to go up. Consumer sentiment is low. I'm very bearish right now. And actually, I would think that the sell-off is going to continue, not just for the rest of this month, but also going further into spring. Todd, you make a great point, because I think a lot of people came into earnings season thinking that it was going to be better. Everyone kept saying, we're, you know, we heard a lot of, we're going to see top-line growth. And I, I, I'm getting the feeling that people are a little disappointed in this earnings season. Clearly, it sounds like you are. So how much further than down do we, do we take this? I mean, is this going to continue to drag us down pretty much all through this earnings season right now? Absolutely. I see another 20% sell-off from here. I mean, there's a couple of things here, Tracy. For one thing, in December, we were anticipating that holiday sales, retail sales, were going to be great. There was a consensus figure that retail sales were going to be, uh, were going to be up on one half of 1%. They actually were negative. So people weren't buying. So now you have people that aren't shopping. People are, are laying off. We had first-time jobless claims go up uh, a little bit higher than expected yesterday. And going further, yeah, you don't have any major... Uh, situation out there on the horizon that, that really causes anybody to be bullish right now. So if anything, as we continue further into earnings season, I mean, even Google had a $2 billion profit, but yet on their top line, they just met on expectations. That's why the stock sold after hours. So further, going further into earnings season, yeah, I would be completely bearish at this point. Todd, there's always a way to make money. Uh, what do you see? Is there a silver lining somewhere other than getting short the market, I mean, are there, is there, are there investments that you like right now? Well, Chris, you're absolutely right. It's a zero-sum game, so you're always going to have a place out there where you can make some money. You know, being in the financial services industry and everything that's taking place coming out of Washington, I would love to get away right now. So I think a lot of people are feeling the same way. So I like this Dow Jones Travel and Leisure Index. You know, here's an index that's actually almost doubled the S&P 500 over the last three months. And you look at some of the major components in there, you know, Southwest Airlines, Marriott, Delta Airlines. I mean, some of these stocks have actually performed very well. Now, granted, it's probably a lot of foreign travelers that mm -hmm. are taking, uh, taking advantage of the weaker dollar. But if you're a shareholder in those companies, you're probably going to be rewarded. So I would look at one index, and that's probably the one area I would focus on. Todd, what did you think of the president's announcement yesterday when he talked about what he wanted to do to the financial sector, what he wanted to do to the banks? I see you shaking your head. As big a disaster as everybody's saying it is? Tracy, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I mean, you know, this is on the heels of the bank tax that he wanted to talk about. Now he's going in and he's telling these banks, these investment banks, that they've got to get rid of prop trading. You know, what he has to understand is that the big banks that go out and do proprietary trading and invest in private equity funds, they're actually raising money that actually encourage those firms to hire additional talent. They're actually going to create products that are, that's going to create credit in this country. You know, you need need credit for the small mm. business owner, for corporations, as well as for individuals if you really want to get this economy moving. But what he's doing is he's actually preventing those companies to engage in those other initiatives. And by doing that, you're actually going to, to paralyze any economic growth that's actually taking place in this country. So it's a complete disaster. I, I'm completely against it, Tracy. And, and we've been on the shows together, and you know how I feel about this. But when we go further into, uh, into this administration, what I really he, he really needs to start to take a step back and start listening to the American people, and hopefully he will, but right now there are no signs of that. I'm not confident that he will either, so do you, do you maybe put a pair trade on this one? Do you short big banks or stay away from the big banks and then maybe look at some of the smaller community-based banks as maybe benefiting from this? Okay, absolutely. Well, if you're investing in the big banks, you've got to start headed for the hills. I would not, and if you want to invest in them, 
Don't even try it. You have to wait till the president gets out of the White House mm -hmm. before you start looking at the big banks. As far as the regional banks go, yeah, there are a couple out there. I know down here in Texas, we have a bank down here called Frost Bank, and uh, Cullen Frost Bankers is the company. You know, they have a, a very loyal client base. I mean, this is a, um, you know, Texans down here are really, uh, they, they really stick to, to the roots of Texas. And so um, I love Cullen Frost because they don't have the, uh, the loan um, uh, deficiencies that a lot of the bigger banks do. So if you're looking at some of the small regional banks, focus on those types of companies. And if you want to engage in the financials, they actually might do well because what you're going to start seeing is higher fees at these big banks. You're going to probably start seeing customers leave those big banks. So if they can actually get just as, as, uh, as, as, as a top-line service as they can with the bigger banks, they're probably going to go with the smaller regionals. So I would look that way. So, Todd, we have a financial sector that's pretty much on ro rocky road for, until this is all yeah. worked out. So you, you stay, you know, aside from what you just mentioned, you pretty much stay away from there. You got travel. Where else does an investor go? Do we go back to tech? Tech seems to be the fall guy throughout this whole mess. Right now, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I always will like tech. You know, there's a couple of things here, though. I'm, when you, if you are looking at tech, you want to clearly look at ways that, that companies are embracing uh, you know, social um, networking, Web 2.0. I mean, similar to this show being online, you know, this is actually cutting edge for News Corp because what News Corp is doing is engaging with people that are actually online. Here they can actually, uh, you know, they can look me up, for example, or mm -hmm. look you guys up. Or, and it gets people interactive. So you've got to look for companies that are really um, embracing the 21st century type of technology that's out there. Google does that. Google does a great job. Apple obviously does a great job of this, especially with the tablet coming out. So if you're looking at some of the tech companies, I would look at companies that are still continuing to move forward. You know, if you think of a company like Palm last decade, they really took a step back. They were focused on more distribution and actually enhancing their technology, and it actually cost them with their share price. So going further, look for companies that, will, that are actually looking at other distribution patterns via technology. News Corp's one example, but that's in the media space. But look for Apple, Think of, um, and also think of Intel. You know, with all right. these new netbooks that are out there, mm. all this, right. this Intel Atom chip is great. Everybody's buying this thing, and Intel has obviously a, has cornered that market. So look for those types of companies. Investors should be, uh, should be well rewarded in years to come because of that. Todd, one of our viewers just asked if you were on Twitter. Do you have a Twitter account? I do have a Twitter account. What is it? It's at Land Cold Trading. At Land Cold Trading. There you go. It's out there. Come on. Check them out. <laughs> go say hi to Todd. Thanks, Todd, Todd Schoenberger, Managing Director of Land Cold Trading. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.